yeah, I'm trying to think about this logically and what makes the most sense. But again, with with AEW and the way that just challengers are lining up yeah. so quickly for for you know for MJF, you know we've we've have Jay White coming up here. What we we have Kenny mm-hmm. Omega offering to be a friend there, Samoa Joe, and as you mentioned, Wardlow still waiting in the wings. So the, the like the line is starting to extend around the block at this point for legitimate challengers for MJF. And yet the one that is the most intriguing is whoever is behind that devil mask or it's been MJF this entire time. And that's just a part of MJF that he can't leave behind. And he's always been the devil. And the the greatest trick the devil ever played was convincing you he didn't exist, which is what this face run of MJF is doing. What? So you're saying it's Sam Punk? <laughs> Because that's his line, right? Yeah. Well, that is that, well, right? that is CM yes. Punk's line, but MJF has also yes, used it. Yes, yes. It's intriguing because, guys, the way this is booked is old school. It's the yep. way it used to be, where contenders would line up and just like, because when you see it all in one show or a couple of shows, no, but you would build up to it. Yeah, I've been seeing this in years where it's like everywhere he turns, oh, MJF's a, a heel here. No, he's a baby face there. Like, the idea that on Saturday night we're going to get Omega against MJF is amazing to me. It blew my mind. I'm like, <laughs> are you sure you want to do this now? Right? On, on, on a collision Saturday night? Are you sure you want to do that? Um, so, like the collision numbers have rebounded. Yeah. They've been doing okay. We don't need to do this I'm right now. I'm that that's – okay. Call me old school. That's a pay-per-view I'd pay for. But that, but it's going to be on collision. I'll watch. We all will watch and we'll comment. Well, and, and- – and I guess, I, I don't know if this was just kind of thrown together last second. It's like, oh man, he's coming up right. on the record that we have for our championship with Kenny. Ooh, we should probably have an opportunity for Kenny to end that. And it, it seems like it's something they almost forgot about and then booked last and, and, second. You and, know what I'm and saying? And soft attendance sales too at Mohican Sun. Yeah. It was, it was lousy until we saw that. Then there was a bump up just from last night. I've been reading mm-hmm. on it and it's like, oh boy. That's something I did not expect, but uh, but as you mentioned, Gabe, this is actually good because it keeps the mystery going, including the masked man. It just keeps the intrigue going around MJF and that world title. Yeah, because the most like I feel like the best payoff for the mask is Adam Cole, but if he's not healthy and he can't go, we don't get that payoff. And like you mentioned, Gabe, if MJF's leaving in two months, like then what? Like all of a sudden there is no payoff and things like that, and they can make things disappear, like we sort of saw last night, where you know. The quarters aren't mentioned anymore. Like, it's interesting to see how they pay it off because there are so many other ways right now. Like, a Wardlow would have made sense there. That would have been a hell of a way to bring back Wardlow. Where, like, yeah. he's pissed off and yeah, wants but, to do things. So, I don't know. I guess that's pro wrestling logic as well because, like, we've we've seen the yeah. man in the mask in action. <laughs> like, yesterday was just an interruption where it was, like, you know, mid-chest up. So, it's just kind of the head and shoulder shot. But we've seen him in action. And if all of a sudden, yeah, that... That wasn't a Wardlow-sized man the first time we saw that guy in action. Wardlow kind of sticks out, especially around AEW. 